Hi everyone, Ian here. Welcome to the Forge Dynamics Getting Started video. Forge Dynamics is our brand new physics system and it's based on the great Box2D. Let's dive in by creating a few circles. Let's then select all the circles and click the Forge Dynamics button, that's the big F, in the shelf. This will create a Forge Dynamics layer and hook the circles up to it automatically. If I show you the Bodies tab on the Forge layer, you can see the circles are all magically in here. All we need to do now is press play and hey presto, Dynamics. Before we move on to something more interesting, let's take a look at the solver settings. If you've ever used a dynamic system before, you'll be familiar with a lot of what you see here. But for those who aren't, here's a quick guide. Gravity is a built-in force that will make your shapes move down toward the ground. You can click and drag the values to increase the strength of it, or change its direction completely if you're of an anarchistic bent. The ground mode allows you to define the default container for the simulation. By default, the dynamic shapes will collide with the composition bounds. See how the circles are all blocked from leaving the side of the composition. We can change this to just the composition bottom, like so. Or we can change it to none. See how the objects just fall through the floor, never to be seen or heard from again. Next up, we have ground friction and ground bounce. Friction can be used to set how shapes slide along one another. And bounce can be used to determine how objects react when they collide. A bounce of zero means a shape isn't bouncy, and a setting of one means the shape's movement will be reflected perfectly. That is to say, no energy is lost. Numbers of higher than one can be entered, though it will not be held responsible for the insanity that ensues. Fields can be used to make shapes move in different directions. If I load this preset, you can see how the attractor can be used to produce magnet-like effects. Collision events are really fun and we'll cover those in a different video, but here's how easy they are to add. Click the little plus on the collision events row and let's pick the colour collision event. Now press play and notice how all the shapes will change colour as they collide. The bodies tab of the Forge Dynamics layer is where you can add or remove shapes from the simulation. A shape that has been added to a simulation is converted into what's called a dynamic body, hence the name of the tab. To view the settings for a body, click the cog button on the desired row. There are actually quite a lot of settings, we won't cover them all, but let's take a look at a few of them. The body type determines the behaviour of the body. Dynamics bodies are fully simulated. This is the default value. It means they are always move according to the forces of the simulation. Still bodies will never move, however, they can be collided with. They behave like they have infinite mass. Kinematic bodies will follow keyframe animation, so you can animate the shape in the timeline and it will follow that movement in the simulation. Kinematic hybrids will behave like kinematic bodies, but once the animation is over, they will then become dynamic bodies, and thus will be fully simulated from that point on. Constrain hybrids is a special setting which will attach a spring to the hybrid body so that when the hybrid comes to the end of its animation, the spring will be added and the hybrid will spring to a stop. A sensor is a shape that can trigger collision events, but will not collide with other bodies. Notice how the ball passes through all these shapes, but it doesn't move them. However, it does trigger the collision events. The collision shape type can be used to set the kind of collision proxy that will be used in the simulation. You can choose from circles, boxes, polygons, and for open paths, you can choose chain or chain reversed. Which one you want depends on which side of the open path you want the collisions to be on. Polygons are automatically built and have a maximum of 12 sides. Live forever and lifespan can be used 
to have bodies remove themselves from the simulation after a given number of seconds. Like so. Starts asleep can be used to have bodies start the simulation asleep. That means they don't move. However, as soon as something collides with them, they'll wake up and become fully dynamic. Starting velocity can be used to make bodies move in a certain direction, or for example a random direction when they're created. If we animate the point count in a duplicator, and then attach a random to the starting velocity, the newly created bodies will ping off in random directions like so. Level mode can be used, for example, to set whether bodies made from text shapes will behave as if each character is its own body, or each word is its own body, or each line. This seems like a good place to leave it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.